All right, we are back with another Bitcoin ETH, uh, just just market update, talking about um, sort of some the technicals of Bitcoin, the technicals of Ethereum, ETH, Bitcoin, and uh, I think I'll also be discussing uh, the stock market, DXY. Should I do funds rate? Uh, no, I'll just talk about. I'll just talk about one stat that's kind of scary, and I'll also, I'll be talking about recessions, um, which is kind of scary as well. I'll kind of get a little bit political here in this video, but it is what it is. We'll talk about technical analysis first. So the technicals actually look really, really good for Bitcoin, ETH, etc. Crypto technicals look very good. If you're just looking, so so let's look at it from three different perspectives. So the three perspectives that I was looking for. And it all kind of came in confluence on whether we were going to break or reject. This was kind of the week that sort of was the deciding point. And it looks like we are kind of favoring the bulls on that deciding moment. Um, we have the parabola right here. And as you can see, the parabola alone, we have broken above the parabola. And unless things go really south, and we did have a pretty bad start to the week, um, if things don't go really south, um, we should hold this parabola pretty well. We have to hold about 19.6k, so about 19k ish around 19 and a half. Um, if we don't hold that, that would be super duper duper bearish, extremely bearish. Um, I don't think that's going to happen over the weekend though. But we could have some pretty nasty candles as well. Don't get me wrong, we could have a very nasty looking candle. Actually, if I were to copy the length of this candle right here. Oh yeah, no, that that still hold it. But if we had some, if we had a candle like this, which this was an ugly candle right here, if the candle kind of closed like that, yeah, we would be breaking below that again. So that's n something we do not want to do at all. We do not want to break below this parabola. Um, but we are breaking above it right now. We are closing two consecutive weeks. The parabola is broken. Now let's look at another thing, which is the Fibonacci's. And it looks like we are breaking above that 0.382 at 23K, which I have always said is an extremely important level to break above, and we're breaking it right now. But we also are kind of in a pocket with 25K. So we do want to break above 25K as well. If we really don't break above 25K with conviction, I could see us kind of ranging tight here. Or what I think is it kind of going to happen with Fibonacci's, what actually looks very clean is something like this where we kind of go like this we kind of just bounce between these two levels 16 and 24k for about a year that's sort of what i really want to see is something like that i kind of want to see a bottom formation like this this would be awesome before the next halving and then we go on an embargo cycle to the next 100k move when people are saying that bitcoin is dead it's never going to pump again whatever um recession blah 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 depression anyways um i'll be so so that's so that's that right here for bitcoin and moving average if you specifically look at the 200 week moving average this actually looks amazing it actually looks amazing on the monthly chart when you're looking at the 50 week moving average um so blx is my clean chart right here let's get rid of all these moving averages right here um for the weeklies uh right here it looks like a deviation below the 200 week moving average if we close like this and if we can hold above this this would look like a deviation that'd be super duper bullish um that actually be very very bullish and on the monthly if the monthly closes like this this would actually look amazing as well and on the monthly if we look at the 50 monthly moving average um it looks like on the 50 monthly moving average this also looks like a deviation and um, right here, we were using that as support. We were using that as support right here. This was a wick. This is sort of like a deviation close. We close below, but it's sort of like a liquidity grab underneath that moving average as well. Um, but that's moving averages. I kind of like the fibs the best, and I can, and I really like the 16, the 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 uh, what is it? The 50 percent and the 38.2 sort of ping pong ball for the rest of the year 16 22k but 
And I also really like that the parabola broke. That is very important. That means that we are breaking the bearish structure that we were setting since 69K. We are breaking that structure as of right now. Eh, it doesn't look like it on the monthly. But this is a weekly parabola. So on the weekly parabola, we are closing above that as well. Um, right there. Um, and also, we got our death cross right here, 50 and the 100 week. Or actually, yeah, the 50, is it the 50 and the 100? Yeah, the 50 EMA and the 100 week moving average do cross over. That usually does. That has signified bombs in the past, but don't let past performance dictate anything because Bitcoin is extremely new. Um, but yeah, it's looking very good technically right here um, overall for Bitcoin alone. Um, parabola broke um, for parabolas that's very important that has give you some great exit points um, some great buying points right here when we saw this pr downward parabola move yeah right here I don't think people would be too sad to sell at 13k during 2018 bear market didn't have to go through that crap um, this one was not a parabolic structure so you couldn't do anything with that um, and right here selling right here at 50 where, where did this close at 55k that would have been it would have kind of played with your head a bit to have a dead cat bounce the bounce made of rubber i do think we will get a a uh live bird drop with a bird made of uh concrete kind of like that this is sort of what i'm thinking is going to happen sort of my base case right here um so we are kind of getting that set up for Bitcoin. Let's look at ETH. ETH looks is actually kind of in a better spot, but we're sort of running into some heavy resistance. Right around, I'd say about 1,700 to 2,000. So about this 1,700 to 2,000 range. I do expect heavy resistance up in here. But in terms of moving averages, or in the FIBs, we bounced off my optimistic target right at around uh, 1,000. My optimistic target was at 1,000. We bounced beautifully off of that. Um, I did not scoop any ETH down here. This was mostly Bitcoin that I scooped. I, I, I do think that ETH, I did think at the time that ETH Bitcoin looks pretty bad. And I do think it still looks very bad or actually pretty bad structurally speaking. Moving averages, not so much, but I'll discuss about moving averages on ETH Bitcoin shortly. Um, it's, it's, uh, but it's uh, broken above this 200 weekly EMA, but it is also coming across where the uh, 20 weekly moving average is coming in confluence with the uh, structural support and the 0.786, or no, this is the 0.236 FIB level right here. I do think we do get a rejection when we come up to this level. I do think we can go a little bit higher, and we sort of ping pong between these fibs. Um, honestly, I could see us. I would not be surprised if we saw 16, 6K, 6 triple digit ETH. Maybe the merge doesn't work, and ETH kind of dumps a lot more than Bitcoin on the next drop lower, maybe, or on the next drop to 16K or whatever. But I do think it's a bottoming formation. And personally, I'm not telling you to buy anything. I will not tell you to buy anything at all. Do not take my word for this. I am not a financial advisor. Do not you do not make financial decisions based off of me. Use a bunch of different uh, different uh, viewpoints to make your own logical conclusion. That's what I'll say every time when I talk about this. But honestly, for Bitcoin and the whole, it, it, for Bitcoin specifically, I think this is a good accumulation range. I think this is a good bottoming range right here. I think I'm personally thinking that 16 to 23k is similar to what 3k to 4k was like back here. I think I think th that's what I personally think. Um, I could be totally wrong. I'm very new to the markets. But that's what I sort of think of as this bottoming formation is that it's kind of like that. But I'll also be discussing about recessions and why I don't think that we'll go bullish just yet. But why I also don't think, I, I personally don't think we'll dump as well. Um, 
I think I, I'm thinking more sideways. Penguin agrees with me on Twitter as well. Penguin is very good. Um, ETH Bitcoin right here has been very, very bullish. Um, super duper bullish um, over the past couple of weeks. These are some god candles right here. But there's not much volume really with these candles. When, when you're actually looking at it, there's not much volume at all. There's some very weak volume with that. Um, let's see some other times there's been low volume pumps. This pump got shot down um let's see what else except except this could also signify capitulation too they have kind of signified some bottoms let's see what was what was it like what i what i've sort of been comparing this to and what i do think is that this was at the bear market bottom in usd terms this was when eth was at about 80 dollars when ETH was bottoming, it actually, towards the beginning of the next bull market, underperformed Bitcoin. Bitcoin had its own rally. But the moving averages are in a completely different spot. It looks like more we could be in something like this. And if something like this were to occur, oh my goodness, that would be horrible for ETH versus Bitcoin. This would be like Bitcoin pumps and ETH doesn't do anything. Um... But um, what ETH really likes to do is that ETH likes to sort of swing above moving averages. They don't really respect the moving averages that much. But they respect the FIBs pretty well and they respect structure. And I do think that this looks like a clear distribution top. And it still looks like it's distributing. I still don't really see it really. I, 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 just, I, I just don't really see this as macro bearish looking. Especially since that's a cyclical lower high. And I am bullish on ETH long term on the USD value. But honestly, it doesn't look like a very structurally sound graph long term against Bitcoin at all. It looks like very, very choppy distribution top. And it looks like it could bart straight down in the similar fashion that it could bart straight up. I honestly still think that could happen. Um... We are getting above all of these moving averages, but they're kind of flat. And um, they, they did respect these moving averages right here. But as you can see, it kind of swung below. It's swinging above. I honestly do think that ETH, over the next year, two years even maybe, it's, it's, it, I don't think it'll do very good against Bitcoin. In my opinion, I'm not sure. Um, it still looks pretty bad though. Zooming out. It still looks like it's distribution. Let's talk about DXY. DXY, it, oh, we. Are we seeing what I'm seeing? That looks like a parabola break. Oh, we. DXY is breaking the parabola. And um, honestly, it has to keep going parabolic and mooning. But, but we haven't closed it yet. Actually, we did close. It's Friday. Um, DXY is breaking below its parabola and that's good for Bitcoin because as you can see when has DXY dumped from March 2020 all the way down to 2021 when did DXY dump again oh that was the 2017 bull market we want when DXY dumps that's when Bitcoin goes on its bull markets when DXY pumps Bitcoin goes on a bear market it's pretty self-explanatory that when Bitcoin and th this is kind of a wick um that that's sort of how it works and when did this ha when did it pump again when did it pump like crazy oh that was the 2014 brutal bear market people don't really realize how brutal 2014 was it was more brutal than 2018 everybody talks about 2018 but 2014 2015 was a pretty horrendous time for bitcoin everybody thought it was dead nobody was optimistic on it at all um I don't really do much SPX, to be honest. Uh, but I, I was talking about this long-term parabola, where if we were to break the, if we were to break this structure right here, um, it's over. It's way, way over. If we close a yearly below this, um, I think it's over forever for the stock market. I don't think it'll ever recover again if we break below this. I don't think it'll happen yet. We have to hold above three thousand dollars by the end of the year. I think I think for this year in the stock market, I do think we will close the year at around 3,500, maybe 3,300. That's sort of 
that's sort of where I'm targeting for this uh, recession that we're in. Um, uh, but we'll talk about recession as well because I've been saying that we had, I, I don't know if I've ever said that we're in a recession, but I've tweeted that we're in a recession. And guess what? We are in a recession now. We've gotten two quarters of two declining GDPs right here. And as you can see, I was talking about this. I was saying the technicals look amazing, but the economy looks horrendous. Who will win? Um, and as you can see, look at the economy. Oh my goodness. Personal savings has collapsed to 5%. 5% of Americans are saving. That is really bad. And look at it. It just, it was pretty high up back in 2021. It just collapsed. It just absolutely collapsed. This is not good looking at all. Um, and we're entering in a recession with zero cash buffer. And um, what I'm honestly very surprised about and what I think is ridiculous is Biden saying that Recession is not defined by two consecutive quarters of negative of negative GDP. Um, it yeah. Um, wait, is the this is a good chart right here? I'll obviously like that. Jesse Olson is the best on Twitter. Jesse Olson, awesome Twitter account. I've learned so much from him. Jesse Olson is the greatest Twitter account of all time. Maybe yes, he he's uh, he's awesome. Um, he's got some absolutely amazing charts. He has called this market absolutely beautifully. His tweets have aged so well, um, and I respect everything he says. He is awesome. Everybody should go follow him. Everybody should learn from him. If you really want to get serious about swing trading, this is an advertisement right here. If you really want to get s serious about swing trading, um. Follow his link right here. I'm not. I'm not necessarily swing trading. I'm more of a. I'm more of a job worker that kind of just, just invests. But if you're really serious about swing trading, he's he's got it. He is amazing at it. He is wonderful. Jesse Olson's amazing at it. Um, everybody should go. It, it, everybody should follow him regardless if you're a swing trader or not. If you're and and all that in the uh, the newsletter i actually haven't gotten the newsletter yet I'm, I'm actually i actually might subscribe to the newsletter it's actually very cheap i might actually subscribe to it um i haven't really <laughs> gotten to it yet i'm not really much of a newsletter subscriber but uh but anybody that you'd ever want to follow if you ever want to get into swing trading he's the best of the best for swing trading anyways getting back on track with my uh twitter stuff <laughs> um Going down uh, right here, yeah, so so we look pretty bad economy-wise. And as you can see, Wikipedia is changing the definition of recession. Uh, the, um, um, the Biden administration is, 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 uh, is um, just denying it. I don't, I don't know how this could end well when, the, when, the, when your president is actually denying um, when the president is actually denying uh, that the economy is bad, when it is bad, and he's not, and he doesn't seem to have any solutions for it. Jerome Powell doesn't have any solutions for it. Janet Yellen doesn't have any solutions for it. They're not finding solutions. That's really, really, really bad, economy-wise. They're saying, ah, there's so many jobs open, but the jobs that are open are ones that are that that aren't uh, suitable at all. Um, they, they, they have jobs that are not, uh, what you may call it, um, they have jobs that, uh, that, that won't be able to pay for your expenses. Inflation is so high that people aren't able to pay for basic goods like driving a car or even eating up their house and getting electricity, all that. It's really, really bad. And let's see, did recession actually change their definition yet? Oh, see... It, they, they did not change it yet, but the Biden administration, I'm trying to find where they said it. But basically they were saying, and everybody knows it, they were saying that there's no recession. Which, are you insane? There's two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, and you're not identifying this as a recession right here. You're not identifying it. What? What? Are you joking me? Anyways... I'm going to get off my rant about Biden. I think he's an awful president. Um, it's pretty uh, easy to say that.
But anyways, that's all I really have to get at for this video about Bitcoin. Um, that's all I really have to get. So, um, yes, bye.